Greetings. Well, if you are finding this YouTuber, fellow Earthling, then uh, I can only but guess you are dealing with shortness of breath uh, or air hunger. Uh, there's a whole raft of things uh, that people call this beast. Uh, they call it dyspnea, uh, pseudo dyspnea, psi syndrome, uh, shortness of breath, uh, air hunger. It's just a sensation. Uh, like you can't get a full satisfying breath. It kind of looks a little bit like, and then why can't I get a full breath? Followed by another attempt and another attempt and uh, maybe one in five, you'll nail it. Uh, it'll accompany with <sighs> trying to yawn. Sometimes you can yawn, sometimes you can't. Uh, so uh, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, and you're probably either suffering with it or you're a treating physician um, trying to learn uh, a little bit more about it and good on you for coming to YouTube. Anyway, uh, this is an update video um, based on my first video. If you haven't seen it, some of you will have uh, that I made in September of 2020. Um, now, uh, I just wanted to touch base with everyone. Um, there was a lot of comments and feedback uh, and questions uh, and the path uh, has gone on since then. So here's the update. Um, the shortness of breath started in 2020. Uh, as you know, and many of you will have gone through the tests uh, with your doctor or family physician. Uh, they all came back normal. Uh, I'd seen a chiropractor, a breathing specialist. Uh, I'd seen my family doctor numerous times. Uh, no one was able to help or give me a diagnosis uh, as to what was going on that I was happy with anyway. Uh, I'd found an article uh, by a doctor by the name of Hannah Sadar. Uh, now, I'm going to bring that up on the screen uh, for you to have a look at, uh, along with the link uh, down in the comments. Uh, you're welcome to go and have a look at yourself. Um, I have uh, uh, communicated with uh, Dr. Sadar. He is not uh, wanting to uh, come on uh, and do an interview, but I respect that. Uh, and he has said all that he wants to uh, about shortness of breath. But um, along of the short, uh, Hannah believes that uh, false shortness of breath, uh, i.e. shortness of breath that is worse when you're not doing anything, um, rather than uh, uh, shortness of breath upon exertion, uh, is in many cases uh, related to esophagitis um, or inflammation of the esophagus. Now, uh, you'll hear uh, people uh, call uh, this by a lot of different names. Um, and essentially, uh, he believed that treatment uh, of false shortness of breath uh, relies on suppressing stomach acid uh, and coating the esophagus with acid protecting agents uh, long enough uh, for it to be able to heal uh, and thus for the shortness of breath to go away. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, I'd also come across an article. Uh, it was an Israeli paper out of the uh, Journal of Family Practice Medicine uh, that was published some time ago, uh, and uh, it was 2008. Uh, and that uh, called the uh, condition something else. Uh, they call it Sy syndrome. Uh, however, all of the features uh, of the condition uh, were the same as Dr. Hannah Sadar's uh, shortness of breath owing to uh, esophagitis or um, a silent acid reflux. And so uh, looking at the table that I'm bringing up now, along with the article, uh, when I read through the 10 features, I ticked every single box like every single one of them. And so I was like, right, uh, the case is uh, either I've got Hannah Sadar's uh, pseudodyspnea brought on by uh, LPR, silent acid reflux, acid reflux curd, uh, and thus I need to follow this acid watchers diet uh, and really watch out um, and make massive lifestyle changes. Uh, or I'm dealing with Psy syndrome uh, based on this Israeli paper, uh, and they're calling it a, a psychogenic breathing disorder uh, associated with stress, uh, anxiety, uh, and panic disorder. 
Uh, and so uh, out of the two, I decided being a uh, pretty happy go lucky kind of a guy uh, with um, uh, with a good, you know, good attitude to life. I um, uh, don't tend to dwell on things and, you know, generally pretty fit mentally. Um, I decided that I must have that silent acid reflux uh, esophagitis going on. Now, uh, I say that on the back of having uh, reflux related issues uh, since my early 20s. Uh, infrequently, uh, I would take a, a acid reflux tablet if I had a, a, a hot curry um, uh, or some a pineapple juice, uh, something like that. But uh, at any rate, uh, I went and saw my doctor and he gave me some PPI uh, medication. I said in my previous video, uh, a meprazole, uh, and I found myself getting lots better. And that's when I made the first video to say, bang, I think I solved the solution for myself. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and here's what it was now. Uh, it was three months uh, since that video in September, uh, it came to Christmas of uh, 2020 and damn it, uh, it came back uh, with a vengeance over the Christmas holidays. I was so pissed. Like I was not, um, not in a good frame of mind. I was pretty grumpy. Uh, over the Christmas holidays, uh, really at a loss uh, because I was still taking my acid reflux meds. So um, what the hell, right? Uh, so I finally started to think, well, um, maybe uh, this beast has got something to do with anxiety uh, or panic-related disorder um, based on the Psy syndrome paper uh, out of Israel that I'd read. Now, um, I, you know, I've, I didn't want to accept it, um, but I... Um, I started to consider, yeah, okay, if I've got personal work to do, then that's fine. Uh, I'll hunker down and do it anything, anything apart from the shortness of breath. And so um, I found two books along the way that were uh, really, really good books. Now, um, I'll put again side by side the books that I read, um, The Body Keeps the Score, uh, by um, by a, a, an intriguing author, uh, Bessel van der Kolk. Um, and I found uh, a, a really interesting uh, look into uh, intergenerational trauma um, and this whole buzzword around epigenetics. Uh, if you're interested in, um, in this kind of thing, you want to do the reading, uh, Bruce Lipton uh, has some great videos on YouTube, I know, uh, also on the subject. Uh, essentially in and around how you view the world uh, influences your physiology um, and your physiology of course can present uh, in many different ways uh, including how you breathe uh, and so it made, made kind of inherent sense to me um, and I went on to read uh, another book um, uh, called uh, It Didn't Start With You um, by Mark Wallen um, and that was uh, an insightful view uh, as well as to um, how this stuff can run in families. And so, righto, I was um, at that point ready to go and see someone and talk to them about it. Um, I never thought I would be uh, going to see a therapist, but I went and saw a psychologist uh, and he was a good dude. A uh, really good dude, like really relatable, uh, nice kind of guy. Uh, and he listened um, and he said, well, you know, um, I, I'm not a breathing specialist by any account, uh, but it sounds to me like maybe, you know, your autonomic nervous system uh, has got a tendency to be uh, more to the sympathetic response uh, as in fight or flight, like wound up and I, you know it made a little bit of sense I, I'm a high achiever I hold myself to a high account I like to aim high um, maybe I just beat myself up too much uh, and that kind of thing uh, he talked about a breathing technique and you're going to see lots of videos on YouTube as to how to solve your breathing shortness of breath through boo techo and uh, other kind of breathing techniques that are talking about you know breathe in for two seconds in the nose and then hold it for four seconds and then breathe out slowly for six seconds and yeah it'll center you uh but 10 minutes later i would just go back to going 
I need to get the, why can't I get the full uh, satisfying breath? Um, and and so, you know, it was really, really interesting. Um, the, the psychologist uh, said, you know, you don't seem stressed out uh, uh, like you were describing when you first got the condition. Has something changed? Is it better? I said, well, uh, I don't know if it's better, um, but I think I've developed some kind of mechanism now um, after 18 months where it doesn't stress me out anymore. Um, and so if I have that sensation, I'm like, yeah, I know I'm not going to drop dead. It's not a, um, it's not a critical condition. And if I just leave it, I know that I'm not going to enter into that whole spiral of going, <gasps> why can't I get a deep breath? Um, and I know that that is what gets many of us, that's why I presented to the a &E in the in the first instance, the first time that happened, because it's just so fucking alarming, right? I, I get it. Um, but after that time, I kind of, it's happened so many times that um, I've developed some kind of mechanism to just uh, continue on without it really bothering me. But anyway, um, between then uh, of making the last video, I have since had uh, an endoscopy. If you are worried about getting one, uh, don't be. It's pretty um, straight up. Uh, you don't really remember much um, after they give you a, a brief injection. Um, I would have one uh, any time again. But anyway, um, it didn't show uh, anything apart from a small uh, hiatal hernia and some uh, mild inflammation in my stomach. So uh, nothing that would cause uh, shortness of breath like I was describing anyway. Um, and so that ruled out the old silent reflux, uh, Hannah Sadars, and um, from what I'd read since anyway, um, this, uh, that condition really only presents in a small number of cases. Uh, and so I can only help but wonder uh, how many people are flocking to um, the Acid Watchers cookbook uh, and whatnot, um, hoping a change of lifestyle will resolve um, something that's not actually related to uh, acid reflux. But, but hey, um, I completely get it as well. Uh, and we're not all the same. Um, having walked down that path, I just don't think uh, that that's the case for me. Uh, the endoscopy showed as much. Um, and uh, here we go. So uh, here's where the story gets pretty interesting uh, in my journey. Uh, about eight to nine weeks ago, I had a horrendous accident and uh, that I was cooking, smoking in a cold barbecue and decided to um, use some methylated spirits to get it going again. And I caught my face on fire, no shit. And it was horrific experience. You can only but imagine what it's like to have your skin literally on fire. Uh, and I'm so thankful that there was a, my spa pool was like a meter and a half away. And after like the immediate shock, uh, I threw myself into the spa, lifted the lid, bang, right in there. Uh, and put the flames out under a cold shower, off to hospital, ambulance, the whole nine yards, uh, thinking the whole time, what have I done uh, to my face? You know, like my life's never going to be the same. Uh, anyway, it wasn't as bad as I thought. I got second degree burns. I'm going to put a photo up, warning, um, but that's me. Uh, eight weeks later, it's amazing how fast the, um, the face healed. But uh, after I came home from hospital and on the fourth or fifth day after the accident, I had this sharp stabbing pain, like right, right in and around here on my left hand side. And I was like, oh, why is this happening? I don't, this didn't, I don't remember feeling this the past four or five days after jumping in the spa and potentially hitting it. Ah, oh. and whenever I took a deep breath, bang, that was sore. And if I had to get up or my, or my wife made me laugh, for example, oh, 
oh, you'd think you're having a heart attack, but I inherently knew it was more musculoskeletal that what's happening. Uh, and so Dr. Google, uh, costochondritis is what I came up with. And um, I uh, saw my doctor um, over Zoom uh, and she said, yep, well done. You uh, diagnosed yourself. Uh, you just need to get some NSAIDs, some uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. It'll go away by itself. Now, uh, I wasn't so satisfied to um, to leave it at that. Now, I'll bring the uh, transcript from WebMD up. So you've got the definition of costochondritis there, um, inflammation essentially of the uh, ribs and the cartilage uh, around the front and usually on the left side of your chest, um, which can present sporadically now. Uh, how strange that I would have that accident, put my body through a lot of stress, maybe have banged my chest, maybe not, uh, but then four or five days later present with the stabbing pain uh, and I'm unable to get that full breath. It's like uh, throughout this whole time uh, of 18 months of, of being like, can't get a full breath, but now it's like, can't get a full breath and oh, stabbing pain. Uh, my doctor was um, uh, not willing to discuss any further the potential connection through there. Admittedly, uh, they are busy at the moment with um, the pandemic. Uh, but you know what? I, um, I, I believed uh, finally that I could see a bigger picture of, uh, of what was going on with my body. Now, uh, I have uh, since finally found... Um, some literature that I'm satisfied um, is explaining what's going on uh, with the shortness of breath that I've experienced anyway in my case. Uh, and I believe it is related to costochondritis. Now, uh, there is very little information online, uh, but I'm excited to say that I found a physio in New Zealand in my country um, that knows about this condition. Uh, he has written some papers uh, and he has agreed to let me interview him. Uh, and so over the next week or so, uh, I'm going to be preparing some questions uh, and um, and we'll be getting into it together uh, to, to hopefully bring a physician's point of view uh, as to what this whole epidemic of breathing disorders actually relate to. Uh, you know, uh, I just want to say before I finish, there's been a couple of papers um, published uh, towards the end of 2020 uh, and 2021. I'll bring them up on the side of the screen uh, Psy syndrome during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, looking at the mental health status of Chinese children and adolescents presenting uh, with uh, breathing dis dysregulative disorders uh, on the increase, uh, and they draw it to an anxiety-related disorder. Uh, could it be something else? Uh, they're not the only ones. Uh, another article has been published uh, out of uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Psy syndrome, an emerging issue in the healthy population uh, amid the COVID-19 pandemic. And, and again, uh, drawing a correlation between Psy syndrome, uh, anxiety, uh, panic disorder, and the current state of the world. Now, um, it does make sense, uh, but having walked down that path uh, and really thoroughly for myself investigating whether anxiety was uh, at the heart uh, of my shortness of breath. Nah, I still say um, what came first, ladies and gentlemen, the chicken or the egg. Uh, and I'm telling you the thing that came first uh, was the shortness of breath, uh, followed by uh, the anxiety that surrounds that. And um, you know, uh, I, I would say, um, I, I would finish by saying, uh, if you are watching this and and it's and that's your life at the moment, you're trying to find an answer, um, and you're at the start of it. It gets better. Uh, I remember the range of things that I was thinking uh, at the very beginning, uh, in and around. You know, uh, if I'm unable to get a full breath. Uh, I don't. I can, cannot see uh, my life in twenty years. Like twenty years of can't get a full breath. No thanks. Like 
wasn't for me and I and I just wasn't going to accept that. Um, and, and part and parcel, I am thankful that I have that unrelenting attitude um, because it's it's because of that that uh, I will inquire uh, and ask and find the answer uh, I'm looking for um, before I will, um, you know, before I would have ever gone down that path. But it was a, a driving factor in my discovery, that's for sure. Um, hang in there uh, because over time, like myself, I'm sure you'll develop uh, a mechanism uh, in order to deal with it a little bit better, it won't be as worse. Uh, and then the last thing is, uh, you know, I really look forward to bringing uh, you an interview uh, in the very near future to cover costochondritis, uh, how to diagnose it, how to treat it, uh, and a little bit more information uh, in and around the path uh, and the services that you can um, uh, engage with uh, to get treatment. So um, until then, uh, love yourself, love your friends, and love your family.